Ahoy there, I be the malicious merwench and this be Pirate Fashions. Today we have two rogues here that are going to be dressed up the same way that we dress up any of our customers that come into our store. So you guys are getting dressed up for some kind of event? Yes, I'm planning to do Mardi Gras and I want to be a pirate. Uh, there's a pirate reenactment coming up and I want to be more like a golden age pirate. Okay, well I will show you some of the ways that we have categorized and styled some of the outfits in our store. So first off, we have the, the seamen, and this is a lower deck hand. It's just a basic bandana, sash, shirt, and pants. And then we have sort of like the intermediate range, which is our officer, and we've just added a waistcoat to that. And then we have more of like our advanced pirates, where we add a nicer coat to it, and they look a bit more captainish. So, what's the difference between the these two? Well, this whole row here is all of our rugged side. We also have a fancy version as well for people that just want to have a little bit more class and more captain-ish to them. Well, I want to be more classy. Okay. Do you want to go with a captain, maybe with a coat and everything? No, I want to be able to throw beads and drink and, and be a little more free. Plus, it's a little more expensive. So I think I want to be more of the, the fancy officer. Okay. Yeah, my event is in the summer, so I think I definitely don't want a coat. So I think an intermediate officer. That, that okay. would be me. So we have both intermediate, one fancy and one rugged. So we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna get you dressed up. Okay, since you guys chose the officer outfit, we're gonna pick out your waistcoats. It tends to be a little bit easier to pick out your waistcoat first. What's a waistcoat? A waistcoat is just like a long vest. And it tends to be a little bit easier to pick out the waistcoat first and then match your outfit to it compared to the other way around. So since you went a little bit fancier with the Mardi Gras, we're going to pick yours out first. So, we have our filibuster waistcoat. We have it in black with white trim and it also comes in burgundy with black trim. Although for you, I think we're going to go with our Commodore waistcoat, which is a very flashy gold with some nice metallic trim That looks on it. perfect. I love that. And for you, we're gonna go a little bit more rugged, but a tad bit more historical as well. And so we are gonna go with our roundsman waistcoat. We have plain black, burgundy, and blue. Well, I definitely like black. Okay, so I got a black for you. So now we're gonna start with your shirts. So since you went a little bit fancier, I'm gonna show you two of our fancy shirts. So here we have our gentleman's shirt. This works really well if you don't want anything too high and constricting around the neck. It is cotton and it has a nice stiff ruffle to it. And it's got some laces on it as well. And then we have our colonial shirt. This one is rayon so it's a little bit softer and it has a nice cravat in the front which works really well if you want to wear your waistcoat buttoned all the way up because this one is actually detachable from the shirt so you can pull this one out. No, I don't think I like the look of this uh, cravat. Okay. Now for you, you want to be a little bit more rugged. Now for historical accuracy, you may want to go with a natural off-white shirt versus a bleach white shirt. But if you wanted to add a little bit more color into your outfit, we do have our Bloody Pirate shirt. Now the Bloody Pirate shirt is rayon. It has much more of a soft flow to it, while our Sea Rover shirt is cotton and it's still a little bit stiffer. Although this one is going to breathe a bit more than the rayon will. Well, I really like red and I like the idea of having like a soft shirt, so I'll go with that one. Okay. So now we're going to pick out some pants for you. And we have both breeches and slops. And we have them in a more affordable, lighter weight version, as well as the more accurate, heavyweight version. For you, I think we're going to go with breeches because slops tend to be a little bit more rugged looking and you've got that nice fancy Mardi Gras outfit going. So these are our Land Ho breeches. They have the riveted buttons on them and they're a little bit antique, but they're not super shiny. They have pockets in the side seam. They still have that adjustable ribbon in the back for up to seven inches because back then they didn't have elastic. And they are very just straight down towards the leg. They don't have much poof to them. And there are two buttonholes at the bottom to allow for more adjustability. Now that's a little bit more of a rugged version. Now we're gonna show you our fancy breeches. 
These are our Buccaneer breeches. They do also come in burgundy. And these have these nice stripes down the side of them with buttons on them that I think will complement your waistcoat. They're not quite as straight as the land hose because they have some pleating at the bottom so they have a little bit more poof and body to them. And they have the same ribbons in the back. Now these we could not put pockets in because of the stripes in them. So maybe you'll think about getting a pouch or something later on to put your things in. All right, I think I like these fancy pants. They look very elegant. Okay. And now for you, I think we're gonna go more with slops because they are very big, baggy, and open. And if you're gonna be moving around a lot during a reenactment, you won't be as restricted. And if it's in the summer, they'll be a little bit cooler with a little bit more airflow in there. So we, again, we do have the lighter weight and the heavier weight ones. The heavier weight ones have this nice wide waistband on them. They have the pockets and the side seams. The same ribbons for adjustability in the back along with some pleating. And they are very wide, big, baggy, and open around the legs. And now we have the lighter weight versions, which I know you said you were going historically accurate and these have an elastic waistband with drawstring. But once you have your sash and belt and everything on top of that, you're not gonna see any of this at all. They do have the same riveted buttons that are functioning for a fly as well. They have pockets in the side seams and they have that very similar wide open leg at the bottom, although not quite as stiff and full as the other pants are. All right, well, I like the idea of comfort and still keeping that piratey look, so I think this is perfect. All right, let's get you guys dressed up. So now we've got your shirt and pants on. Well, you know, these pants don't seem to fit. They're way too big. Well, in the back, we actually have those adjustable laces here. You're going to make sure your pants are pulled high up around the belly button. They are not low riders. And you're going to pull these laces until they fit very snug on oh, you. Much better. And you want to tie it in just a bow like this. Make your ends even to keep it short. Okay. As you can see, the shirt is tucked in and it's all high around the waist. Okay, so how do you put this, this uh, cravat on? Now if you look, you have a small tab at the top with a buttonhole and the layers underneath have buttonholes as well. So this actually buttons onto the shirt. Okay. So if you look, you have an inside button here. So that top flap buttons to the inside of the shirt so it appears to be coming from the outside. Now, there are other buttonholes here. Now for yours, I'm only gonna go one more buttonhole down because that way when you wear your waistcoat, if you wear it buttoned up, you can pull this out. If you're not wearing it buttoned up, you can go ahead and attach that second buttonhole on it. And just like that, you have your cravat. Okay. Hey, I think this sleeve's a little big. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna tuck in your shirt. Oh, okay. And those pants go high around the belly button. Now a trick that we figured out with these sleeves because either they fall past your fingers or they sit at the wrist but then you have all this extra fabric bagging down. So what we're gonna do is you wanna pull the sleeve up to just where it meets right above that thumb knuckle and you're gonna untie these strings on the laces and you're gonna wrap them around that seam right there. Just like this. I'm gonna tie a little bow. And now you can see all the extra of the shirt actually poofs over and covers that. Or an alternative is, since all this is very thin and taken in, you can actually put leather bracers on there as well. So is it time to put on our waistcoats now? Yes. Okay. So you always want to ensure that the shirt and pants fit perfectly first and then put the waistcoat on. Yes. So, should I button these? Now, since you're a little bit fancier and you have this cravat, I think you should. Now, it's just like a suit jacket. Most people do not button the bottom button, so typically you don't want to go past where your pocket flaps are or not more than maybe one button down past where your pants are. And since we didn't button that last button, he can go ahead and button this all the way up and pull it just straight out the top. Now, if you want to keep this from flapping around too much, 
Sometimes the waistcoat has small enough buttons to fit, but typically not. So I have seen some people actually use tie clips to hold that in place. Now you wanna make sure that all of your fabric here is pulled out from the underarm and the shoulder. And it's not all tucked in to your waistcoat. Okay. Now if you are wearing a coat, you wanna make sure all of your ruffles are pulled out as well. So if yours, again, we're gonna make sure all of this fabric is pulled out. Now I may suggest leaving yours open since you want a little bit more movement and it's gonna be a little bit warmer out. And since it overlaps nicely, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up the ribbons in the back and that will actually keep it pulled open a little bit further as well. We do it the same way that we did the pants. Just tighten that up. And now you can see it hangs open just a little bit further now. So, are these okay? Um, not quite. Well, first off, you have a very fancy fringe sash, whereas your outfit is a little bit more rugged. And also, if you look, you have a black waistcoat and black pants with a black sash, so there really isn't a lot of color contrast going there. So, we can pull out some other options for you. Now, the first one I have is this red one, and that has a really nice just dual tone to it but it doesn't stand out too much from the shirt but the majority of it is black so it does pop a bit now if you want to go with a little bit more pop you can do the red with the off-white on it or you can do the burgundy well, I kind of like the red okay okay so what about this well, you're the opposite. You've picked a one of our l rugged linen sashes, and you have a very fancy outfit. And these golds definitely do not match, and you want a lot more contrast going on than that. So what we're going to do is we have our governor's sash, oh, which is a very nice. fancy metallic sash, and it also has that fancy fringe at the bottom. All right. But, uh... Maybe we need to introduce the Mardi Gras colors in. This looks like it's too gold. Well, then we can try this green water taffeta one yeah, with a black think... fringe on it. Okay. And maybe one day if you're wearing a different color, you can actually flip it to the lining side. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's black. All right. So how do you put these things on? Okay, so what you're going to do is the majority of our sashes for our men are 12 feet. So you want to find the middle of your sash and you don't want to put it directly front or directly centered, just a little bit on that 45 degree on that hip. So we're going to put the middle right here on the hip. Go ahead and take that for me and then turn. And now when we get to the back here, we're going to cross it over just in the center of the back. And when you pull it tight, you want to zigzag it up and down and pull it really tight. Go ahead and take those for me. Now you always go back to the same side that you started with, otherwise you're gonna have a short tail and a long tail. So we're gonna go back to the same side here. If you're wearing a belt, you're only gonna tie it once, and when you put your belt on, that top tail is gonna hang right over. If not, you're gonna tie it a second time. Now you can scrunch it down a little bit if you don't want it to be quite as wide. You still want to keep some width on it and you want to equally scrunch it. You don't want to just push the whole thing down underneath the gut because both of these get tied very high around the belly button. It also has a slimming effect to it too. So now we're going to get some bandanas for you. Now maybe if you had changed your sash color to a different color, I may then match the bandana to that. But since you've got red, I've just stuck with the red one for you. And for you, since you're doing Mardi Gras and you already have your gold and your green, I thought maybe a purple one would yes, be fitting. that looks perfect. So we'll so. show you how to put them on. First off, typically you do not wear your bandana rolled up like this. You want to completely unroll your bandana. And the inside has a little bit of that fold of the hem to it and the outside is flat. So what we're going to do is we have two long ends and a short end. So I'm going to put this on, make sure it's on hold. You do not want to cover the eyebrows, you want to go just about a half inch above. Go ahead and hold that for me. 
And now we're gonna flatten this back piece down because we're only tying over top of it with these two long pieces. And you do not want it to cover the ear, you wanna go behind it. So now we're gonna slide the whole thing slightly to one side and we're gonna tie it on the same side that we rotated it to. You wanna make sure to get underneath that bump of the head so it stays put and just do a normal square knot just like that. Does it matter which side it's on? Typically not. Um, if you have a cavalier style hat that is up on the side, then you will probably want to have your tails hanging down on the same side so that your color shows through. You can also have it done on the same side as your sash. Okay.